play. I got it, and it is dirtier. It's an LS swap. Yeah, four eight. Oh, Not. This is the guy from TikTok. My bumper. The turbo Mustang recently caught on fire. So what are we gonna do today? Do some burnouts and do some digs, no prep whatsoever to get ready for the track because I need to learn how to use the line lock. Oh no! Our table! It's broken! It's only right to do it. You know, it almost caught on fire and burned down the whole house <laughs> about 48 hours ago. I'm still slacking on the wrap here. I have the bumpers to wrap up, the gas cap and the mirrors. Uh, the bumpers are probably the most time intensive, but we do need to do this testing because I'm trying to run the car at OSW tomorrow. It did catch on fire. I redid all of the wiring from the previous owner, so I solved that issue. It doesn't look like it's lighting on fire anymore. We need to get gas, and then I'll go straight to my testing spot in Mexico. Are you ready, Mr. Zest Lord? I'm ready. First time that I'm driving it since it caught on fire, and it, it definitely caught on fire. Devin was here for all of that, so... Sending my thoughts and prayers, as they would say. Here goes nothing. You ready? Let's go. So just a normal day of filling up. The reactions of people while I drive on the road with this thing is hilarious. Like they just stare and take pictures and stuff. So LS swap. Yeah, four eight. Not. Oh, it's the guy from TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> what's up? Yeah, what's up? <laughs> what's up? We got a whole meat out here. That thing sounds crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it is insane. He's got an N54 with an on three turbo. That's crazy too. Yeah, I could hear it. Yeah, that's what I have on my other Mustang. Similar to that. That's pretty sick. Yeah. How much does it make? To be honest, bro, I don't know. I haven't dynoed it. That's pretty cool. I really want to throw it on a dyno. I need to find somebody that I know to a dyno. A few moments later. Now Mike gave me a whole instruction manual as to how to do a burnout. Um, man, I forgot the GoPro. Darn it, you guys will have to see it from the outside. It's okay, we'll do more testing. I'm gonna let out like 10 PSI. <laughs> Preferred tire setting that you um, want to use? Yeah, so Mike said 18 PSI on prep. We're not on prep, we're on the street. So I'm just gonna go on 18 PSI. The goal here is not to get the car to hook. Well, actually, maybe. Should I try to get it to hook? I guess. Yeah, Actually. so maybe I'll go to like 16. That's what he was saying with no prep. Completely different. What? It's completely different. It's completely different. I don't know what's different. Watch out for the car. I don't get it. Well, you gotta figure it out. talk to Mike more clearly because I don't know how to get this thing to do a, a burnout. I was stepping on the brakes as hard as I could. It was just pushing through them and it started doing a rolling burnout for about two seconds, but that's not good. You know, we need that stationary freaking get a cloud of smoke like a nuke went off. And then roll through it. So I need to see how I can do that. I'm going to ask him maybe to explain it in a video because he's not here. He's in Sebring, Florida. But yeah, um, both times it didn't hook. It hooked better than my Whipple car, I'll tell you that. Uh, I just pedaled it, let out, come back in. So you could technically go and race it like that. You just have to be pedaling it 24 seven. Well, I just want to remind you all that this thing also has a manual brake booster. So it's not like you can sit on the brakes like you would on a normal car and just do a regular burnout like I have in my Camaro. So it's definitely tricky, especially with the TH400 too and that high stall converter. Uh, I don't know, boys. It's gonna be a whole lot of trial and error. This is why I didn't show up to OSW today. And I would have been like embarrassing myself at the line. Probably wouldn't have hooked at all. But once we get the formula down for actually getting the tires hot, this thing will be fast. It won't be a joke. We 
got back from testing and I was curious because I never opened up the radiator cap since I bought this car. Not to mention, I really haven't been driving this car that much because I've been wrapping it and we haven't done any pulls on it, but Devin's gonna show you all how terrible this coolant looks in just a second. It does not look right. It is muddy, chalky, and uh, we either have A, a blown motor, which I don't think it is, B, a bad head gasket, which I also don't think it is, or C, just corrosion. I'm gonna do a full coolant flush tomorrow, but that is not what coolant is supposed to look like. Uh, that's chocolate milk, you know, that's the stuff that um, Devin's toilet looks like after he drinks his Starbucks, his zesty Starbucks. So when he doses himself with that stuff, that's what it looks like. And that's not normal at all. You think that was funny? <laughs> it looks... This car is just a joy. It lights on fire. Every day I find a new issue. It still has an oil leak that I haven't fixed. It needs a new uh, oil return feed line from the turbo. But I did go ahead and check out the dipstick for the oil and the trans cooler. And guess what? Both of those oils are clean. So I don't think it's a cracked cylinder sleeve. We would have lost compression. We would have been misfiring. This car took off pretty fast. So I don't think it's low on compression. I don't think it's a cracked sleeve. You definitely would know. And the car would misfire and stumble. I think we just need to do a coolant flush tomorrow and get all the coolant out of there, get some new fluids in it, and then see how it looks in a couple of times after I drive it or in a couple of weeks. But I hope it's nothing beyond just dirty, corroded coolant. Cause this can definitely happen. The next day. You guys are ready to see the world of sludge that's about to come out of here. If I could even play, I got it. And it is dirtier than I thought it would be. Oh boy, yikes. That does not look good, not at all. Hopefully it doesn't look like that after a couple of flushes that I'm gonna do. I wanna reattach the hose, which I literally just did. We're gonna fill up the entire system with distilled and then we'll add in this whole thing. We'll pour the entire bottle and see what happens. And then we're gonna have to let it run, get hot and then drain it all out again. Oh, that's all filled up we need to run this thing at operating temperature drive it around actually for about 10 minutes and uh, probably heat cycle it four or five times so that just means letting it get hot cool down let it get hot and then we will flush it all out again and see how it looks for the second time <laughs> that cleaning agent is that you can see that it's doing its job so it got bubbly and it's cleaning that gunk and nastiness out this is nerve-wracking I'm draining all the oil out right now might be difficult to see but yeah oil overall looked clean besides I mean some rod bearing material some sparkle but I mean Sally's motor oil has looked like this Soli's motor oil looks like this and yeah pretty much every car I own looks like this um, technically not a good thing, but it's whatever, it's rod bearing fatigue and wear. That right there looks like a little bit of moisture, but I think I might be in the clear because um, it's only a very minute amount. This car is always ran on E85. I'm gonna ask my friend who builds LS engines what he thinks about that, because that's not uh, metal, that is water. And I think if we had a head issue or something like that, the entire thing would look like chocolate milk and get some actual driving around with that coolant additive in there so we're just going to drive around for 10 minutes come back and drain all of the coolant for the second time now look at that that was the second flush and it's not looking any better so i'm probably gonna have to flush it like four or five times it looks like uh, Devin's bathroom after he keeps clogging it. Listen, man, it's not my fault the toilet's messed up. Yeah. This car is uh, interesting, but... It is? <laughs> what is it? It's, a, it's got a 4.8 Vortec in it from a Silverado, so it's uh, LS-based. You guys know LS engines? No, I... No? I, I know a lot about, know about cars. Like, I know good about cars, not like... It's from a Chevy. 
barely got cleaner, so we're gonna have to use the garden hose now. I'm gonna show you guys how to do a flush with a garden hose. It is a little bit more invasive, but I think it's necessary. The bottom radiator hose disconnected. Now I disconnected the top one right here that goes to the thermostat and the block, and we're just gonna spray right in there with the garden hose and see what happens. So hopefully this cleans it out. You can see it all falling down there. So it's coming out of the bottom of the radiator. And uh, I'm gonna do this until the water becomes clear, crystal clear, and all the mud comes out. So that water is pretty clear now. It was very murky, dirty, and disgusting, but that means we have successfully flushed out the radiator. Now we can start the car and go ahead and take that radiator hose right on top, spray the hose water in there, and get everything to cycle. When that thermostat opens, it should clear out the rest of the gunk that's in there. You do need to watch your temperatures while you do this, or it could be uh, potentially sketchy. You don't want to overheat it, but let's do it. This is actually working because all of that stuff right there is the cleaner that I bought or the chemical that I put in there. I'm going to do it one more time. It got a little hot, so I shut it down. We're going to let it cool for like 10, 15 minutes and then run another garden hose right through there and see what happens. Hopefully it comes out clear. are working but what I'm gonna do now to make sure that I don't have to do the hot flush and basically um, circulate coolant through the whole block without having the car on and it getting the temperature is removing the thermostat so I just took out the thermostat housing bolts uh, two bolts very simple 10 millimeter this should uh, be able to pull out and then I'll take the thermostat out and run the garden hose through it once again this time it can circulate through the block without any interruption because usually you would have to get it to temperature in order to get it through the block. But now we can actually circulate the whole system with the thermostat out. Got the thermostat out, did the trick to flush the block. Water's coming out nice and crystal clear on the bottom now. Thank the Lord. This was the final result of the last coolant flush. It looks a little bit red because um, I was pouring some concentrate in there and we're doing a diluted mix. 50-50, so that's what it looks that color. It dripped down, but yeah. You saw the before, this is the after. It definitely cleared all that gunk out. I'm glad. Hopefully it doesn't get dirty again, because if it gets dirty again, we have a problem. Truth be told, I still haven't figured out how to get the tires to spin. I decided, you know what? We're not gonna test this out in Mexico. We're gonna go to the track and learn how to do it there. So there's really only two options. You get it done or you don't. I think I can figure it out. You know, Glenn from Hades Motorsports, the one who actually built my motor in the Camaro is gonna be there. And he said he's gonna be more than willing uh, to help me out and figure it out. So. Before I went there, I actually went to OSW with the M4. It ran disappointing times, but that's besides the point. You guys will see that in a separate video. But while I was there, one of the track employees was like, put a pull noodle on the uh, cage where your head is. So that's what I did. We have this all set up, and then I'm going to rent a truck and trailer tomorrow morning to bring the new edge up to OSW. So you got to make a slight investment. I think it's only going to be like 100 bucks. We'll see the official price tomorrow morning. And the new edge is finally going to the track. So I'm excited. Uh, definitely hoping to lay down a nine second pass. Three days later. CRI. Oh. Yes. A-N-T-I. Oh, you said A-N-T-I. A-N-T-I. I email your country. Uh, you want to see the cap on them or? You got The new box truck, man. Dude, this thing is sweet. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I've never been in luxury before like this. They didn't even have a, a pickup, so that's why we're going. Oh, you hear that? Maybe we should take the motor out of this one if the new edge blows tonight. I say we just take the box truck on the strip. <laughs> I'm a number one. This thing is not getting on here without taking off that bumper. So if this doesn't work, I'm going to take off the bumper, but I really don't want to. As you all can tell, we got it all loaded up now. We used their provided straps on the front. And then if you guys recall, when I bought this car and took it back home to West Palm Beach, I went ahead and bought some very skimpy one for the rear. So we're using the yellow one right there. That should hold it together. We've got the chain. We've got two straps on the front, one on the rear and one plus the chain. But getting this thing on the trailer was freaking scary. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, with that high stall converter, it really wants to go back and roll back. So you have to give it a good amount of gas. And then you have to know when to stop because you don't wanna like fly over that stop right there. So it's like finding a balance between the two. It's not like driving a normal car. I'm just glad it's all on the trailer looking super good. I actually finished up the wrap 
This morning I spent five hours on it, the front bumper, laying everything, came out super mint. So hopefully this thing can put down some times. We've got a two and a half hour road trip to get on the way. Spent 250 bucks to make this happen. Plus, 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 because there's a track fee too. So we'll see how it does with the tow. Uh, Luke was kind enough to help me out with everything. Let's get started on this road trip. Where even is this key? Probably has the same engine in here, by the way, as the new edge. Going to look so freaking goofy pulling up to the track like this. Just acquired the fire suit thanks to one of my followers. He hit me up. He used to have a turbo vet. He sold it and uh, yeah, he pretty much has no use for the fire suit anymore. Luke, you good? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Guess who just wasted $200 on a U-Haul and it got rained out? Me. All this effort. I mean, may as well just have the new edge fly off the trailer right now, right? Yeah, it is. It's not looking good. Definitely no. not. Good. No Orlando Speed World, cancel track, it's about to rain, I don't have the hood on the car, so we're going to get off on the nearest exit, turn around and go back home, and unload the car. Needless to say, we're cooked. Look at these <laughs> Random follower we ran into, that is so sick, bro. So we originally were just driving and we heard like a pop and we thought, oh my God, that's a state trooper right there. Hey, he's not gonna get him. He's not gonna get him. It looks like the state trooper's door was open, I don't know. You think he's gonna go get him? Uh, I think he's good. But pretty much we heard this loud bang and I was like, whoa, what was that? Both Luke and I freaked out, but it was like his two-step or his rolling anti-life with that thing. They're, com they're coming after him. Are they? Tried on the fire suit. I'll show you guys what it looks like. It's a little bit big on me. It kind of looked like a marshmallow. But hey, you know what? It wasn't worth 200 bucks to get this thing on the trailer, you know, to get the actual trailer, but it looks really, really good with it. So usually the entire suit runs you 100 bucks, but I got it for completely free. He had a Turbo C6, doesn't need it anymore, and it actually fits perfectly. So I may have lost over 200 bucks today with the canceled track day, but at least I got the free suit. Flick these uh, demon eyes on so you all can see that. If you guys didn't check out that video of me doing the RGB, definitely make sure to check it out because we added red halos to these headlights. There it is. So you all can't tell me that I didn't unclap this car. It looked so bad when I picked it up. It was rough. <laughs> got it off it did scrape at the bottom side because the wood plank decided to go up but I mean the damage was minimal here just scraped a little bit of wrap off the bottom I'd rather have that than rip the entire bumper off like it was about to when we first loaded it 